Hello everyone, my name is Chris Guda, and welcome to kind of a new Earth segment on the channel. What is the new segment on the channel? This is basically be a segment where I upload, basically unload a huge amount of gaming news or game or YouTube gaming related news, more specifically, to, uh, to YouTube, so you can be aware of things that are going to be going on on YouTube and things that are happening on YouTube that you can be a part of or that you can at least be aware of, so that way you're not in the dark about it. These segments will be just to uh, come as large bits of or large bits of new gaming news comes along that seems relevant to either YouTube or just in general big gaming news, quote unquote, at least in my opinion. So these these segments are not planned, they just come and go as they as they do. First segment of this is going to be regarding Total Biscuits fight with Gary's incident with Gary's incident day one developers, Wild Game Studios. For those of you who are unaware, Total Biscuit is an individual on YouTube who does first impressions videos called WTF is. Basically giving a first impressions and a rough review of the game without a score behind it, but giving a rough review of the game to let you know if this game is worth the buy, and even to give you gameplay footage so that you can know, well, he may not like it, but I may like it, or vice versa. Basically what's happened is, Ge the developers of, Gar of Gary's Instant Day One, Wild Game Studios, have gone behind the backs of Total Biscuit, the game station Polaris, and various companies that Total Biscuit is affiliated with, to put a copyright strike on his Gary's Instant Day One video. And they have done this in such a way that it is not right and more or less abuses YouTube's copyright claim system. What they've uh, basically, Total Biscuit gave an overall unimpressed and gave a review gave a review of the game that basically said do not get this game and after a few weeks of having that out it, the video was content claimed or content striked I should say so that he can no longer make ad revenue off of that off of that video now other videos that also play of this game day one let's plays and general other general reviews of the game also have but have not had their ad revenue taken off. Even ones, even reviews, reviews and playthroughs that say the game is actually bad have not had their content removed. What this basically means is Wild Game Studios have gone after Total Biscuit, Total Biscuit specifically because he is a bigger voice in the public, and what he says can make or break a game dev. I believe it, and I go, with, and I would actually most heartily tell you that I would, I follow the guy mainly so I can know if a new game coming out on, on a Steam or PC is worth the purchase. Now, you can I will leave a link to Total Biscuit's video on this so you can look into it in full detail, so you can know full details upon exactly what is going on so you know the whole story instead of me paraphrasing it. But what has happened is basically uh, Total Biscuit's partnering program, Polaris, has sent out has sent out a request to Wild Game Studios asking to have a review code of the game, so that the, so, and also let them know that he that they would be making monetization on on that on that game video when it does come out, and when it did come out, or uh, and when Total Biscuit received the content the first content claim, not content strike, which what's the content claim turned into a content strike after a while when they didn't like how it looked. The game, de the game develop uh, Wild Game Studio CEO came out on the Steam forums and specifically said Total Biscuit does not have rights to put ad revenue on our video game. So that's basically what's going on. If you want the full story and more news about how YouTube's copyright claim system is bunk and needs to be reformatted to protect people like us who do gaming related topics, check in the description down below to see his video. In other news related to YouTube, there's going to be a new policy implemented soon for YouTube, mainly pertaining to your subscription box. What this new policy does, for those of you who are unaware, is basically people that you are subscribed to that have higher subscriber counts will appear in your subscriber box more than people who have low subscriber counts. Just to explain this better, I'm going to name names of people and then myself just to kind of explain how this works. Say you're subscribed to PewDiePie, Smosh Games, uh, Koban Armani, Maryland, and then uh, Safazen, and then myself. Just an example, six people. But this can happen when this can happen up to when you have up to 90 subscri subscriptions, 200 subscriptions, whatever amount that may be. 
of those subscriptions, the ten, the ten percent of the people you're subscribed to that have the higher view have the higher view counts and subscription counts will appear in your sub box. But the people that are lower in subscription count will not appear. Meaning, people like PewDiePie and Kobot Armani's videos will appear in your subscription box more often. But people, but people, once you get down to the lower end of the spectrum, such as Safazen or myself, you will not see our videos very often. As in, they will only be there if you've already watched every other video that's in your top subscribed user's channel, or user's subscription feed, so to say. What this means for you is that, what this does mean is that, if you are subscribed to small people like myself, um, Heart Gold Soul Silver 1994, uh, Saint Meyer, Saint Meyer, or Stu as he first calls himself, if you're subscribed to people like that, you won't see their videos very often, even no matter how often they may upload. So I encourage you to talk to, you know, write messages to these people and ask them if they can give you an outline of how much they upload, when they'll upload, and when to ex uh, and or when to expect uploads. I myself, you should expect uploads from me once a day at the very least, twice a day on Fridays, unless I give put out a video specifically explaining that I am not making a video for days X through Y. Bad news for PlayStation 4 and Sony fanboys out there, seeing as Watch Dogs and Drive Club have now been delayed until spring of 2014, there will be no launch titles for the PlayStation 4 when it actually does hit the market. So those games, so a lot, there may be a game or two that I'm missing in this, but they may all have also been slated to be released a week after or two weeks after the PlayStation's launch. Regardless to say, PlayStation 4 will have zero titles upon launch. Though, if you pre-purchased the games and got some of their bonuses, such as for Watch Dogs bonuses, those extra, that extra content you get will still be available to your PS4, but the game itself will not be. This applies to many sites such as Amazon pre-orders, uh, GameStop pre-orders, everything. A little bit short, that was my time on, the, on this new segment here, this new news segment, if you will. Um, as I said at the, at the start of this, the segment just comes along whenever it comes along, whenever there's a large amount of news coming along in the video game world or in the YouTube world that I feel that I feel that a lot of people should be aware of. I may not cover everything available to the gaming news on this ch on this segment, but whatever I do bring to you, I will make sure it is of the utmost importance so that you so that you know that these videos are kind of a high priority, high high importance deal. Thank you for watching this video. And I kind of hate to do this kind of thing, but if you enjoy this segment, please subscribe to the channel wherever that may be around here. So see more videos for myself related to gaming, let's play, first impressions, everything you can kind of imagine from a gaming channel to have, in short. Thank you for the time, and that has been the news.